Hello everyone, this is Almir, V-E-3-D-A-L. Uh, here I am at uh, my QTH and uh, behind me here, right here in my backyard, I have my latest uh, project which is the Magnet Loop Antenna. Uh, this antenna actually it was uh, one of those uh, projects that uh, you buy everything, you get everything what you need and then you just put on the side and then life gets busy and you never get the chance to, uh, to, do, to finish the project. So finally, uh, lately I, I'm not uh, operating too much uh, the radio, uh, life is busy, you know, it's all good, but uh, finally I had the chance to uh, put this uh, antenna together. And uh, one of the main reasons that uh, I did this, I made this project, it was because of this uh, antenna you can operate it inside and outside. So, and uh, for sometimes you just are not able to operate it outside. For example, uh, last weekend I, uh, we were at the cottage and uh, I put up my, my hex beam antenna and uh, on a Sunday it was so bad, like the weather was so horrible that windy, rainy and stuff like that, I had to put the antenna down and I could not operate it. And so if I had an antenna like this, I would be able to operate it inside. So that, that's one of the nicest things I think about this, uh, this antenna. It's a really nice antenna, but uh, and also I think the, one of the biggest uh, frustration about my loop antenna is that uh, it's a very complex antenna. There's so much you can do, uh, so many different shapes, uh, capacitors, uh, vacuum capacitors, air capacitors. So there is a really broad range of uh, materials that you can use it. Uh, to you know to to get the best result um, there is a I bought this capacitor at uh, eBay uh, it was uh, rated uh, from 15 to 240 240 picofarads uh, it's a large uh, I'll show you outside but it's, it's a very large capacitor and uh, apparently it's it's not that easy to find a capacitor of that size because the, what I have learned is that uh, uh, if you get a capacitor, an air capacitor, that the blades are very uh, close to each other, you're very limited in, in terms of uh, how much watts you can transmit. Um, my first one that I bought, it was a very small one, and I believe it was probably max 10 watts of, of uh, that you, the power that you can output. Uh, this one apparently I, I think I can go as far as maybe 50 watts even though I, I will I think the max that I'll do is like maybe 20 30 watts maybe I think it's good enough for FT8 um, so yeah but uh, so I'm still testing uh, running some testing here and there uh, uh, earlier today I did uh, quite a few uh, contacts on 20 meters it was very very good um, the SWR, it was like something like 1.27, which is very, very good. So since I said that I'm still uh, running uh, a lot of tests on this antenna, um, I believe I can go up to 40 meters. And uh, so we'll see how it goes. So like I was saying, uh, this antenna is it's very complex. I, uh, the basic measurements that I got uh, for, for this, for my project, I got online. Uh, since this antenna, it's a very, very high Q antenna. Uh, it's very, very tricky for you to uh, tune in uh, where the frequency where you want to be. Uh, for example, at, at this point, I, I've been aiming only the digital mode, the FT8, and uh, the reason is because it's it's easier. Uh, if you try to tune in, let's say on SSB uh, phone part of the band, uh, a lot of times. You, you, you tune in where, let's say, if you find somebody, and then, but by the time you finish to tune in the antenna, the person is gone. So that is the, I think, is one of the biggest frustration about the Delta Loop, uh, Delta Loop, uh, the magnetic loop antenna. It's the tuning part. Um, there are tools that you can use it. There is motor that you can use it uh, to uh, remotely tune the antenna. But it's it's very comp complex. It's it's not that easy. Um, there are softwares that also you can uh, you can install and 
in your computer and it works parallel with the uh, the motor uh, and then you can tune uh, like that so that will be very precise uh, at this point I'm tuning uh, manually so I, you, I go under the capacitor and manually I turn or you know give more or less whatever and but you can go back and forth quite a <laughs> quite a few times so it, it can take a long time so that is a kind of frustration but it's a it's a good good experience you know a good start let's say and uh, so we'll, we'll see if I if at, the, at this point it's 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 doing well and uh, maybe in the future I will uh, you know come up with something better like to uh, tune in the antenna so uh, let's take a look at, uh, outside of what I have done and uh, and I'll show you so the uh, the mast and the stand are uh, one inch uh, PVC pipe and uh, the stand here what I have done is uh, as you can see there are three uh, T and uh, I connected them together here down here uh, putting a, a screw and a bolt through as you can see here and then uh, for this pipe here coming out what I did I just uh, did some uh, slots like uh, cut out some uh, this slot around here so to go inside to the uh, the bolt and the nut and uh, for this one here I didn't have to do that because there is no no bolt coming out like that and uh, so the, the mast is uh, it's about uh, I would say about uh, seven feet tall somewhere in there And uh, the uh, this is the uh, copper copper tube in the pipe, uh, half an inch, and uh, overall the length is about uh, ten feet, and uh, and it comes all uh, coiled together. So you have to uncoil as it one coil. You make it make it this circle, and. Uh, so the diameter of the uh, the loop is about uh, 39 inches. Yeah, so there we go. It's about uh, 39 inches diameter, 10 feet long, half an inch uh, copper tubing. So the uh, the coupling uh, to the loop, which is the smallest one, it's uh, a quarter quarter of an inch uh, diameter uh, copper tubing. And, uh, and here we have the uh, coax uh, coming out and uh, so this is, uh, this is a very critical part like right here uh, this is where you get your SWR going up or down so this is uh, for me to work the distance that distance this is where I got the best SWR so far uh, it could be less or, or more I, I seen it online some of them it gets really close and uh, in my case this is not that close it's about two inches and a half so that's where you get your best SWR and uh, down here so we have the the air capacitor uh, 15 to 240 picofarads as you can see it's, uh, it's quite large uh, the blades and all that and uh, the connections that I did here is um, I used a, a vise, my vise to uh, uh, press the, the end of the tubing, the copper tubing. Um, you can do that with a hammer, but it, it doesn't turn out as nice. I did, I did my first ones I did with the hammer and then with my uh, uh, the, um, Moxion uh, antenna that I, I used some copper and I hammer to uh, smash the uh, the copper tube but it didn't turn out quite well and this time I used a vise and it, and it did a really really good job and then just put a hole through the tubing and then put the bolt and nut in there and so down here 
it's the knob that uh, you tune in either you add more or take less and uh, the adjustments are very 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 fine you have to do it once you, you got closer to the uh, frequency that you want and if you want to move it a little bit left or right it has to be like a, a you know millimetric move that you do so this is a sort of also critical part that you know a lot of people I seen they put a, a, a 12 volt motor in here electrical motor and then do the tuning by uh, uh, wireless and, and they help in the, with the software so that it helps quite a bit it cuts down a lot of time I tell you and uh, in the back here I use some of those uh, I don't know what the name of this but <laughs> anyways you know what I mean so this is what I use to uh, secure the uh, capacitor in the back So the uh, diameter actually, the diameter of the, uh, the small loop, the coupling loop, it's 80 inches across, 80 inches. And then from the, from the top to the bottom, it's slightly less, it's about 7 inches and a half. And the reason is because I kind of, uh, it's not a totally circle, but rather like an oval shape to what I've seen in the internet that uh, online that if you have more sides here close to the big loop it, you have a better SWR so that's what I did sort of a little in the oval shape to get as close as possible or more contact or whatever with the big one with the big loop so this is it guys it looks pretty good actually pretty good look antenna So let's go inside and uh, I'll show you some of the uh, contacts that I did on uh, 20 meters. So earlier today I did a, a, a few contacts as you can see here uh, on 20 meters. Um, I received it here for, uh, for this one, uh, Kilo 4 Young Julia plus 8 I received from him and he received from me uh, minus 2 which is very good. And uh, this one here, Whiskey 5, Michael November Delta. Min I received a minus 5, he received a minus uh, 14. And then below here, uh, KC8 MLB, I received minus 8, and he received it plus 3. So that's excellent right here. And uh, he was in Florida, I believe. And uh, plus 3, so that's awesome. And this is just antenna right there, like you like you saw on the on the backyard. Victor Echo Three Delta Alpha Lima. Thank you very much, seventy three, my friend. Here we are, guys, uh, on uh, forty meters. Um, as you can see, it's, it's it's a little under or over um, at seven zero seven six is one point one nine, and uh, seven zero seven four, which is the FT eight, it's at one point five five. So as you can see, it's how high Q this antenna it is. And uh, it took me almost uh, 10 minutes to do this tuning from 20 meters to 40 meters. And uh, uh, on, f on 20 meters, as you saw, I was able to do some contact. Uh, on 40 meters, I'm not sure uh, what I'm going to get because at this time of the day, I'm not sure if, uh, if it's going to be anybody there or if they're going to be able to hear me. And uh, so here's some of the, uh, the data from the, the 40 meters at uh, 13. Uh, return loss 13.3 dB, that's not really good, I mean, probably getting out maybe 40, 50, maybe 50%, I'm not sure, at uh, 20, 33 ohms. And, uh, and, and if I would get tuned in at, like it was, uh, 
let's say at 1.19 that 13 dB probably would be like 20 dB and that's how it makes a huge difference sometimes a little adjustment here and there so as you can see so this is not easy uh, I mean this is this is the, the frustrated part of the magnet loop antenna um, you know so but anyways uh, it's all uh, it's all good it's, uh, I love to to do things like that so anyways let's see if we make some contact all right guys um, unfortunately I was not able to do any contact on uh, 40 meters uh, I tried and there was nobody there on FT8 and uh, I think probably because of the, the time of the day and uh, so I went back to 20 meters on the uh, SSB uh, foam side uh, uh, of the band and uh, I was able to do a contact actually uh, but uh, when it was just about to give my uh, signal report uh, the camera stopped <laughs> recording uh, but he gave me like 5657 five, and uh, I was surprised because I was not even uh, quite tuned in where the, the frequency where he was and uh, but he was able to uh, to to, uh, to hear me so that's that's a good start and uh, the the noise level is just unbelievable. It's like five S five F seven, and uh, I believe it's because in the, in the backyard is uh, there are uh, swimming pools around the neighborhood and uh, motors and uh, AC and all that stuff, and it is all compact. It is pretty close by, and I think it picks up all that stuff. That's why the the noise level is just whew, it's, it's 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 tiring. And uh, but anyways, uh, this is I think it's a good start. Uh, this is not an antenna, obviously. Uh, I'm not gonna use every day, uh, but you never know in the raining days. You know what I mean? If you have something like that, or if you're not able to uh, operate, uh, have an antenna outside, so you can try something like this uh, inside. And uh, it's quite an expensive to 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 build one. And uh, then again, it's it's quite complex. Uh, there's a lot into it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to develop this uh, project any longer, but uh, you know, I think, like I said, it's a good start. So um, yeah. So uh, anyways, uh, thank you uh, for uh, stop by, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Seventy three.